Morning everybody, welcome to Spoon Nature. There's our project for today. Um, we got another CVA Kentucky Long Rifle. I uh, received it this way. Some parts have been taken off and placed nicely into a baggie, which helps. <laughs> Not rolling around. A uh, friend of Brian, uh, he asked me to take this and make it like I would one of my own. So I'm going to add this, a nice patch box cover. I've never had this before. They did a good job. I mean, they've obviously owned a lot of guns. They did a good job on the finish of it and uh, just a few problems. The gap here is, is really bad, like it's normal. I don't know if the wood shrinks after they put it together or what, but everyone I've found so far, there's a gap in there. Uh, this one's big enough I could put a second plate in there, but I'm going to try to get away from that. It's been altered somewhat. Uh, the nose cap, there was a uh, shim in there. I'm guessing they trimmed down the stock to get it to set back away from the muzzle, you know, but it's like I get all that figured out and probably make a new shim. And uh, they did a good job on the finish. I hate to take this finish off because it, it does look nice, but uh, it's going to have to happen because I'm going to have to add some brass to it and obviously I'm going to have to carve. So we're going to sand it down after that's completed and then refinish it. It's a little simple project compared to the other ones. But uh, it's still going to be some work, but I enjoy that, I think. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to get started. Um, we're going to go ahead and take, get the rest of the brass tore off this thing, get it down to a bare stock. Uh, we're going to try to narrow that gap if we can. So, here we go. So this will be our starting project. You can see there's a pretty good gap in there. Uh, we're going to try to lessen that gap. Ta -da. How about that? You can see it now? So we're going to try to get rid of that gap as best we can. And it looks like they've cut down the stock to bring that nose cap back. And they didn't get it cut square. So that's kind of what I'm working with. We'll try to get it back to square. Okay, so taking the spring out, uh, paddle or lid, whatever you want to call it, the spring, it's there. So I'm down to the bare metal. This lets me sit it on there and get a good idea of where I'm going to put this thing. So it's kind of difficult because it's straight here on the top of the cone and then we got our angle on the belly of it. So it's just kind of a spatial thing I look at to see where I need to put it and then I'm going to put the screws in. There's going to be one here and one here, right? So I'm going to put those in and that's going to hold this in place as I outline it. So that way I don't have to worry about freehanding it and having it slide. So let's get those next. Now we're just going to have to take a chisel and fold that outline. I went ahead and took the stock off because it, uh, it wasn't necessary at this point. It doesn't need to be in there. Alright, so I got, I got the gouge. It seems to follow those contours pretty easily. Alright, so I just took a phosphor bit and hit the uh, the top piece parts of this because that was just easier than trying to chisel that out it's a really tight radius so foster bit got that drilled that gives my location and then I'll continue on uh, with the chisels it's got a nice little pilot get down where I can even see it yeah all right We'll keep on with that. Uh, let's take a look at see where we got on this. Okay, so there's that. I'm not a big fan of the uh, going down three inches just for caps. So minus the uh, the thickness of the plate, that's going to give me about a quarter inch, three sixteenths. Okay. 
we do that and we're at a half inch right now and if we uh, subtract the plate it's about an eighth of an inch so uh, well, we're gonna be three eighths we'll get done with that so that's gonna work that's just enough room you can reach in there and grab your caps now we're gonna start taking this away we got the easy work done now it's time for the intricate slow work Okay, nice product. I got a notch out for the spring. And you can start setting it in. So, not bad. Nice product right there. So, I uh, did have a little problem. I <laughs> had a lot of problem. <laughs> um, flat here. Then as I got here, it started to round over. So what I had to do was, was get this set on the top, hold that down, and then bend that corner down to match that profile. Okay, just plowing the trough now for the uh, spring. And that also sets the depth of your cup here. So that spring, see so when you pull that back, that spring right there actually pushes down. So you got to give it the clearance for that. So that is also the clearance for your your cup here. But I think we're about there. I don't feel it pushing it up anywhere. It seems to move freely. All right, we're gonna get some screws in that. We'll call it a done deal. Continue on with this. Need to tighten that up just a little bit. Need to tighten the radius. Right. Coming. You're getting there. Okay, so here's a little detail I added, uh, just a piece of brass wire, and this, so we can start, okay, so here's a detail, a detail that I started with, I uh, just took a regular piece of brass wire, and I flattened it out, give it some shape, and I'm going to put that on the back of that, and voila, give it a little character, so that's, uh, I'm going to carve that out and set that in also, and then um, this part should be done, and we'll be ready to sand it and get to that part of it. And uh, I really like that. It turned out well. Might do a little bit down here, but we'll see. Anyway, moving on. Okay, so I got that one set in. Now I'm, i got another piece of wire, and I flattened that out, and i got a shape that I want. And I'm starting to get that one set in next and then it'll be done I did go out and buy this nice little tool let me back that up I did go out and buy this nice tool and it's really helped me a lot uh, my carving skills are not where I didn't want them to be on for something like this and this certainly helps uh, big thanks to my buddy Chris for setting me up with that idea uh, I did a great job on that thank you Chris all right, moving on. So we're going to get this set in a little better. Uh, it's closed. you got to go real slow and take little pieces at a time. Okay, so got that all done. So now we're just going to sand this and uh, get right back down to that base wood and start over. But uh, that turned out pretty good. This is one of my better ones I've done. <laughs> Impressed with this one. So we got a problem with the, too much gap in the bottom of this. Uh, this is the piece that normally comes in there. 
and it's too thin. So what I'm going to do is take this piece of brass that I finally found and uh, we're going to make a new spacer in there. It's about double the thickness though. So that's going to work out good. Uh, that's enough thickness to move this uh, forearm piece all the way to the end. The nose cap and everything will line up that way. So uh, what we're going to do now is let's go ahead and lay this out and uh, get that made. What I like to do actually with this just a, a black sharpie and I'll just mark up the brass uh, mark up the brass yeah, since I don't have any layout fluid this is the, the next best thing so, dry this quick so I'm going to go ahead and get this laid out and start making one Okay, so we're almost there. Uh, I'm just going to take a file now and get all this work down. So we have this shape. Ta-da, ta-da. Alright, so it's time to fart. We're going to start uh, fine-tuning this thing. Okay, finished product. Turned out pretty good. Uh, so now we're just going to reassemble this. Uh, I'm going to put that in. So go there, oh yeah, there we are. So that's going to go there. We'll put that in, put the barrel on, and then work on the nose cap. So that's where we're moving to next. Okay, so we got the spacer in. I'm going to have to profile it to match this. I uh, went ahead and uh, had steel pins in it. I took those out. We're going to put brass ones in. And then we get those profiled as well to get it all one nice flat surface. Uh, the good thing is uh, that after adding that spacer, that nose cone fits in there, and it's now flush. So that was an accomplishment. Uh, there's no gap. No, whoop, where we at? No gap. Just gotta get it all filed down, and this project's about done. Just have to get these parts fitted and then finish it. Okay, so everything's fitted, sanded, and ready to go. Um, this made a big difference, big, big difference. It, you'll see a shadow there uh, because these two pieces were evidently sanded separate. This is flush, this is not. So um, this is the best it's going to get. Um, sometimes that's all you can do. Uh, we got a pin. The nose cap says flush, which the gap is gone. The nose cap's flush. That was what I intended to do, so I've accomplished my goals. So at this point, uh, we're going to do the old tongue oil finish on it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and mix it with some uh, walnut stain that I'd actually made from walnuts. Uh, give it a little bit of darkness to it. And that's about it, so we're moving on to that next. Okay, so this is a dried finish, and uh, I'm going to take some 3,000 uh, sandpaper now, because like I said, it raises that green. I'm going to take that over and knock that down, and uh, then we'll be moving on to the uh, tunnel wall. At this point, at this point, we got the, uh, the walnut stain on, kind of cobweb. So what I like about the stain is this is a water base. And it'll go in there, it'll lift up the grain, and it'll really get in there. And as this thing dries, here's a good example. This is what it looks like. It looks like nothing's on there at all. Um, until you put the tongue oil in, then it brings that right back out. So <clears throat> this is one of the, uh, the finishes that I've used in the past. 
and it's worked really well for me. So I continue to use that. So I'm just going to let this dry for now, and we're going to be moving on to the tongue oil.